Welcome back to the channel everybody. Here again in South Africa. Hope you're loving this series. It is extremely windy today and we're getting ready to move camps and head to another region of South Africa that's going to have a much different terrain than this. I wanted to share another story with you guys before we head out and a learning lesson for me that uh, I wasn't even going to post but I feel like I need to because it's a good learning lesson for any bow hunters out there. On the very first day we hunted here, Rob was filming me and we went out on so many different stalks and we were just uh, learning how these animals were behaving and really trying to dial in what we needed to do to get an animal with a bow. And by the last stalk, I was just a little edgy. I was like, man, this is gonna be extremely hard. Even though it was the first day, it's just getting turned down by all these animals and, and figuring out it was gonna be very tough with this wind swirling and able to shoot with the wind. But one of the guides told us that there was a reed buck that had been hanging in this particular valley. It was a small valley and it had these, these shrubs in it and he had been there somewhere around that area the whole time uh, that they had been there, just roaming around. So it was almost a for sure thing that he was gonna be in that area. So we went ahead and went over to that spot. It was late in the afternoon and that stock ended up going on farther than what I thought it would. We kept creeping and creeping around these bushes and finally, one of the reed buck does came out. As soon as she came out, I thought to myself, that is a Texas white tail doe. And then the buck followed. He ended up running out to 61 yards and I had to dial out on my bow. And as soon as I drew out to that 61 yards, something I've practiced a lot, he runs off. And right there, I probably should have put my bow down because the 61 yard shot would have been great. That's well within my, you know, my comfort zone. Uh, it, even though it was uphill and it was a little windy, I feel like I could make that shot. When he ran out to, it was 80 something yards, I think it was 83 yards, then I said, I don't know. I think I just want to take this shot because I'm, it's at the end of the day. I've been stalking all day, I haven't got anything, I don't know how many opportunities I'm going to have. I want to take this shot and I don't have an 80 pin and I ended up guessing. And that was another mistake right there as I, I guessed on that shot and I completely missed the animal. My third mistake was I did not test my broadheads when I got here. I've shot Rage Tripans. Uh, Everywhere I go, you know, there hasn't been anything I've encountered that won't handle a rage tripan, you know, whitetails and hogs, and I've never hunted big African game, Not, but these aren't big. <laughs> but everyone says use fixed broadheads, use fixed broadheads. So I did not practice with those fixed broadheads, and I did not know where that arrow was going to travel completely. <sighs> then my fourth mistake, y'all, the reed buck ran out to 103 yards. And our guide, Patrick, gave me the range on the binos and I said, I'm gonna just bracket it and guess again and fling an arrow. And when I did, it actually hit the reed buck and it hit him in the back leg. That was a terrible mistake on my part. I should have never taken that shot, y'all. I should have paused at the 83 yard shot and let off and just let him go. It's on the first day, you know, we got more time left to hunt. If any of y'all have ever wounded an animal, it feels terrible. I thought, well, that animal's gone, I wounded it, it's probably gonna get eaten by jackals or something. But then, luckily, we came across that reed buck again, and uh, the guys were able to get it with a rifle and get it down, at least, and that made me feel so much better. It was just a, it was a huge learning lesson for me, and. Uh, I will never, I will never draw back like that unless I am 110% confident and really check, check my entire scenario that's going on, all the little factors. And after that, y'all, I was questioning my existence as a bow hunter entirely. Just after that day, I was like, man, you know, what am I doing? I, I'm thinking I can take shots like that, you know, getting cocky like that, and. You know, I practiced and practiced, me and Rob practiced a lot uh, and obviously practiced throughout the year, but 
uh, that was just out of my league. So going out bow hunting again, I did not have confidence, but luckily y'all, I was just able to get a great opportunity and get a 30 yard shot. I didn't think we were gonna be able to get a 30 yard shot. You had to play everything right. The conditions had to be perfect for the wind in the right direction and just the noise level, uh, these Nialas and these water bucks, their, their ears, the way they can hear is just incredible. All these animals, incredible eyesight. So uh, it's really more about the stock. If you can get your stock perfect, then you're gonna get yourself an opportunity at a 50 yard shot or less. But there's many, many factors that are gonna bust you on these bow hunts out here. Now I got my confidence back again, made a good double lung shot on that Nyala and we're heading to that other ranch. And I'm glad I just have some confidence. But learning lesson, we're about to go head to this other ranch and go see the taxidermist, go check out some other animal species that they have here, just see the mounts and everything like that. So let's go. another stop at the South African Buckies, otherwise known as the Naranga. I decided to branch out and get lamb and mint this time. Nanaka. 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 <laughs> Sorry, Patrick's not gonna let me mess that up. You have to learn three different languages here in South Africa when you grow up in these parts. Mm. Well, that. Lamb and mint. Mine looks just like yours. Except mine's lamb. The lamb here, totally different than the snakes, y'all. It is, I don't know what the the lambs eat, but it doesn't have that like gaming goatee flavor. It's more like steak, it's delicious. That was the lamb and mint. Lemon mint was excellent. Enjoy it. I will have one another one of those before we go, for sure. <laughs> so it's getting a lot more arid now. Yeah, it's dry. We'll it's a bit nippy out here. Heading into the desert. Right? Big. Look, like I could tear your face off. Bow hunting Africa! Probably not what you thought, right? The area we're heading to now is like what you would think of more as Africa, but still, to me, this looks like. South Texas. Painted rocks. Yeah, they even got the painted rocks. I mean, it's beautiful. But it's gonna be very difficult to try to get something with a bow. I may have to switch it up, end up using a rifle. So we are here at another town, about halfway to our next destination, but we're stopping at the taxidermist first. I do have that reed buck. Uh, I'm gonna do a Euro mount on that on that reed buck, <laughs> mainly because I don't wanna look at that thing and uh, just have the memory of the bad miss that I had. But I did shoot a very, very nice Nyala, and that was with my bow, so big trophy for myself. And uh, we might have a few more before we leave, but. Uh, Ryan, who's with us, he has racked them up. And Rob's, Rob's already got a Anyala, and he has a uh, Sable, which is one of the most sought after, like, true trophies of Africa. So let's go see what else they got in here. This is all salt in here. like all salt down here. This is all hides. What is that? A possum? Mongoose. All these are animal skins. Wow. Yeah, so. Is it an elephant? Yeah, elephant. Elephant, huh? Elephant skin. I feel how hard that is. Yeah. Well, it's. What? Oh my goodness. Yeah, check the pool of the rhino. 
That's a hoof. Oh, that's a hoof. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be crazy, like, four or five months from now when we get these things back. We're going to totally forget about it, yeah. and then they're going to show up, and it's going to be like Christmas. So, oh, yeah. so here's my two animals right here. I've got my reed buck, which you guys from Texas, and pretty much looks like a whitetail with, uh, with horns. And then the absolutely beautiful Anyala skin. OSG is going to be uh, surprised by that one. Wow, the, uh, the smell in here. It smells like your taxidermy place, like for fish. Very pungent. Just look at all these amazing animals, y'all. So these are some that are being done. This right here is actually a gims buck. On the next place that we're going to, they have a lot of these. So this might be the next have. thing. It smells like it smells like nail polish times like Four 45. Five yeah. <laughs> Woo. These are uh, I think dick dicks. David, are these dick dicks? This is uh. Are these dikers? Like, uh, this is a clip springer, right? No, uh, that's a clip springer. Tiny little deer. Look at that little guy. So you guys are the whole paper that they're talking about. Ears broken, both spitting, eyes. These kudu are massive. There's your Nile crocodile. Wow, that's creepy. Okay, that was good. Got to see a lot of examples in there. Had the, they had pedestal mounts, they had regular shoulder mounts, they had full body mounts, crazy stuff like crocodiles, lions, baboons, all sorts of tiny deer species that I don't even know the names of them. I just had a, uh, what would be the equivalent of a whopper here in South Africa. What was that place called? Uh, well, hold on, let's get this, hold on. We got this. Sound like a steak. It was a chain. Steak, stickers. Patrick, what was that burger place? Steers. Steers. Steers ah. and beers. Steers. Where did you? <laughs> bleep. Just bleep it out, just bleep it out. I love this truck here, by the way. It's a Land Cruiser truck. I would love to have one of those. Ladies and gentlemen, look at these huge trees and a giant basket seat thing. Look at this, look at this. It's like a big old bird's nest. Over here, it literally looks like South Texas. Heavy, heavy cover, brush shrubs, not, not much trees. There's some trees right here at the lodge, but that's about it. The rest of this area, it's about 10,000 acres that we're in. We drove through like these different preserves that had uh, all sorts of animals. So everybody that doesn't know, pretty much Africa is split up in a bunch of uh, high fence ranches. Like it's not the kind of high fence ranches you think of like in Texas and other parts of the states. Um, these are so big that it oftentimes you don't even see a fence. And um, this number one, to keep those animals in of course and you know the running uh business of of hunting out here and people coming out to hunt these exotic animals um but it also prevents any disease that the animals could get from crossing over into other ranches and things like that it's also huge for um the preservation of different species um for example like the the sable uh, that was almost hunt, hunted into extin extinction. And because people are interested in hunting sables, now all that money that has been brought in from hunters um, and the preservation, because it's now important to preserve that for a, a financial incentive, it helps grow that population back up and they've come up significantly. And that's been that way with a lot of other species. So it's, a, it's kind of a weird circle. Like if there wasn't hunting here, uh, the economy would be a lot lower in the, in the species. There would be a lot more poaching and, and things like that. So there's a more of incentive to protect them. And it's just like in the States too, you know, we want to, uh, 
practice good conservation, preservation of our species, and that's what's going on here. And because of that, we are seeing just literally hundreds of animals a day, at least on this other place we were. Out here, it's gonna be a lot harder to see them from what I've seen so far, but it's, it's a lot more plains game in this area. So we could run into Gims buck, Springs buck, Spring buck, uh, all sorts of antelope species and just really see some cool stuff. I just don't know if we're gonna be able to get it done with the bow, but hey, it's all about the experience. Bow hunting was the jam on the last spot and if it's for rifle hunt on this one, I'm not gonna be disappointed. These rooms are super nice. I was not expecting this at all. I thought the last place we were at was really nice and uh, now like me, Rob, Ryan, we all have our own little lodge rooms and then there's also a main uh, big cabin as well that's out here and it's got a bunch of really really neat mounts and it's just it's just amazing y'all we actually have a little bit of time left in the day a couple hours so i think we are going to kind of mount up and go see the terrain and maybe even pick up a rifle and go hunting so uh there is a gims buck out here which kind of looks like a, an oryx which we have back in texas you see a lot of exotic ranches they have really long spiky horns really the animal i had on the top of my list when i came here was a water buck just because they they look like just a majestic mule deer white tail elk species and they're very hard to kill and i was unable to get a proper stock on one at the last place just uh, just got busted really hard to kill with a bow um, they have something here that is called a leshway it's a red leshway and it looks similar to a water buck uh, again very elusive all these animals out here are going to be very elusive they have extremely good eyesight so stay tuned because we're about to get a whole new experience in a different part of south africa oh it doesn't hurt nearly as bad like I, like beforehand i couldn't close it like that without being one to like I was almost going home. It was it was almost like you were going home. That could have been a big important dude. No, I for sure saw a red lush I, I thought I did too. No, I for sure. 100% red lush No, this one in the back is a nice 